Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story, and today we're out at Volo Auto Museum, and also they sell cars, so if you go to volocars.com, you can not only see some of the cars, better yet, just come on down. Come to Volo, Illinois. But you can see those cars, and you can see their inventory, and these are some cars today that aren't for sale because this is Brian Graham, you doing? the director of the museum, but these are some of his dad's personal cars, so we're getting a little inside scoop. So I'm going to grab the camera for just a moment. I'm going to feature Brian here. Brian, uh, tell us what kind of car is this we're going to be looking at today? Uh, this is a, a Duesenberg II uh, torpedo back sedan. It was also nicknamed the 20 Grand. Uh, the Duesenberg IIs were uh, built by Duesenberg, but they started in the late 70s and went through to the early 2000s. This one was uh, created after the, uh, the Duesenberg 20 Grand back from the 30s. Um, it was nicknamed the 20 grand because that's what it cost brand new uh, you know, back in, uh, I think it's 1933. Uh, 20 grand was a lot of money back then. $20,000 would buy you 50 Model A Fords or it would buy you 20 brand new homes or one Duesenberg. So definitely a car for the, uh, for the rich. And even the Duesenberg 2s, which were built, you were sharing with me in the 70s, mm -hmm. and you had to kind of wait for these to be built. How many of these were actually produced? There, I mean, it was just a handful. There, there was only 63 Duesenberg 2s uh, ever built. And uh, they said they were built by the Duesenberg company. Uh, but yeah, it, it, they were very costly cars to build. This one uh, in particular cost over a million dollars uh, to build this one. Wow. Everything on the car is you know, handcrafted. Uh, all the interior, the leather work, the steering wheel, um, you know, really everything is, is one of a kind. For so, so we've taken the uh, stanchions down. We're doing this uh, not to be done by the general public, by the way. But, uh, we're doing this just so that you can actually see it crisp and clean without that. And take a look at this. This is, and by the way, this is the Duesenberg room. So I'm just going to kind of show you there is a stack of Duesenberg 2s, and you can kind of see that in the background. We just featured this car so you could see that individually. But take a look at this car, which is featured in the center of the room, because even like the, the leather around this here, and these headlights swivel with the way you're driving, so when you turn the wheels, they turn towards that direction. And even the, the detail and the writing is all there. It's just wonderful. And this is my hand versus that light. You can see the size of that thing. Brian, do me a favor. You're six foot one. Stand next to the car. I'm going to step back one step. I mean, <laughs> that says enough right there. This is some sizable automobile. Look at the beautiful foot ornament on that. I'm actually just going to take my cell phone and try to light some of that for you. I mean, just look at that. It's just... Yeah, that's Lalique Crystal, and it does actually have a light in the hood ornament. Yeah, that's tremendous right there. We're not going to figure out the light on the hood ornament. We're gonna just going to enjoy it that way. There's your Duesenberg. Let me take an overall look at the side of this car. It's a wonderful color too, isn't it? I mean, really luxurious. I don't know if this is a gray or a tan. And here's your Duesenberg II emblem. Brian, share with me what you were sharing regarding the yeah, if you look at the uh, the mesh on here, they're a, a square mesh versus a round wire, which uh, the round wire is a lot cheaper, a lot easier to work with, a lot more inexpensive. You know, when it came to the Duesenbergs, everything was done like it was done in the 30s, with exception of the drive line. The drive line's the only uh, only difference between the cars. They could have done things to make it cheaper, plastic lenses for the headlights and. You know, stuff that a lot of people wouldn't even notice, but they did not cut corners. Yeah, this coupe front end, I mean, this this thing looks like a tank. And this looks solid. And then the beautiful padding, and the way the doors open up from the front to the back. We'll take the a look. The back is all the you know, beautiful woodwork in that. 
Let's take a look at that. Yeah, the camera's getting on all that. Need the seating. And in the center, you've got a, a speedometer and uh, some other gauges too. So you can see what the driver, how fast they're driving? Yeah. Wow. Have you ever been in this one? I've been in this one. Okay. The ironic what thing is... What do you feel like when you're driving around in this? Cramped. Really? As big as the car is, it is a very small driver's compartment. Wow. So you've driven this car? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I didn't know you drove it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get that. But they're, they're very tight cars. You know, the people back then, they were, they were smaller than they are today. And you were sharing with me back in this time frame that your family was in charge of selling these cars. Right, we were the uh, you know the official dealership for Duesenberg Twos in uh, in the late seventies and early eighties. Problem was they couldn't keep up with the orders. You know, people you'd order these cars custom built. Yeah, and uh, you know the Duesenberg company because everything is hand built and every car is different. They couldn't keep up with the uh, with the orders, and they actually underpriced uh, the cars too when they uh, you know told people uh, you know they were selling them. They you know quoted X amount of dollars for the car, but it cost them about double to actually build it once they started building it. Wow! So they let's, didn't uh, they didn't do too many of them. Let's take a look at the tail. I haven't done that yet. So there were 63 of these Duesenberg twos sold total. Correct. So, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them here. We have 13 of them. You have 13 of the 63. Yep. Holy cow. Duesenberg even built a, uh, what they called an estate car. That was a, uh, a golf cart. We got one of those too. Oh, really? <laughs> Is this a rumble seat? No, that's a trunk. Okay, a trunk. Okay, let's take a look at the engine compartment. We're not going to start it because we're indoors. Even like I'm noticing this massive piece here to hold on to the tire. Wow. Well, that's impressive. And if you look, the uh, side pipes out the other side, those are actually functional. They ran the exhaust wow, yeah. through the side pipes. What are they running here? It's a 427 uh, Chevrolet motor. Are you sure it's a Chevy? It says Ford there. You know what? This one originally had a 427 uh, Chevy motor in it, and then they ended up, uh, there's problems with the motor, and they swapped it. I forgot about that. Is that right? So it is a Ford. Yeah, it, when, it, when it was under development, they that's had a Chevy, and it didn't right. work. We're working together. All right. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they were originally building this car, they wanted to duplicate it as authentic as possible. So the engine that they had in there uh, was a 427, but it was also supercharged because the original Duesenbergs were supercharged. Okay. But there's complications with it, and they swapped the motor. There we go. <laughs> All right, Brian, stand right next to it. Brian, always fun to see you. People, come on out to the Volo Auto Museum. I mean, this is just, a, this is just the entryway into the rest of the 400 cars. Brian, thanks for being on my car store. Thanks for having me.